Well, Absolutely. look, I mean, all this money and this easy money, Ryan, whether it be from the Federal Reserve and this easy money and rates at rock bottom levels or the federal government with all this money, trillions thrown at the economy, has allowed investors to look farther uh, along the risk curve. Look, look at cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency uh, now, Bitcoin, back below $40,000 this morning, but about a month and a half ago, this was at $64,000. I know you have major concerns about investing uh, in cryptocurrencies. You've, you've likened it to buying lottery tickets on the show before. What's your take on this decline? Is this enticing you to get in? <laughs> well, first off, nothing gets me more fired up on a Tuesday and Dennis Gartman than talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Um, <laughs> but I think what's remarkable here about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin is it's just like the casino gets bigger. And what's fascinating about it is when an asset typically gets bigger, you know, if you look at Bitcoin, it's about 100 times larger uh, than it was five years ago and it's widened its investor base. So when that happens, typically an asset gets less volatile, it gets more normalized. Well, the volatility in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies hasn't gone down at all, which just says the speculation's just as rampant as it's ever been. And again, that just speaks to, again, a bigger casino. The other thing that's fascinating is you always hear, well, crypto's an inflation hedge. It has this limited supply or Bitcoin specifically has limited supply. Well, maybe Bitcoin has limited supply, but there's literally 10,000 cryptocurrencies today. And when you liken it to gold, because gold typically be, is the, I guess, the analogy you use. It's the new gold is what I've heard a lot. Well, gold never had that competition from other metals, uh, you know, in terms of actually being the one and only limited currency that you're going to start to use. So I think, you know, almost every argument about crypto is pretty weak. Um, I'd even argue if you talk about it being the new gold, well, if you look at gold as a long-term investment, it's a horrible investment. It barely keeps up with inflation long-term. You know, it's never been a good long-term investment, even though it can be a very good investment to have during inflationary periods. You know, Dennis, I know you like gold here, and I think as an inflation hedge, short-term, that's definitely the case. So I think when you look at it and you start thinking about what's going on, all we talked about this morning is inflation. Uh, the Fed could ignore it, but we know uh -huh. it's there, and we know it's going to keep kicking in is you do have to adjust your portfolio. And I see a lot of static portfolios right now. I look at like 50 portfolios a month, maybe more portfolios than anybody in the country, possibly. Um, and you know, what you see is you have a lot of these portfolios that have a lot of growth stocks, have bond funds. Nancy just mentioned bonds. These don't work in an inflationary environment. You know, the world is changing right now. And that's why you do want to have real commodities that have real use in society you know, not digits on a screen like crypto that, you know, literally does nothing. Um, and also that's where you want to have, um, you know, different types of cyclical stocks in your portfolio that benefit from that cycle. So things are changing right now and you do have to adjust your portfolio. But I'm going to go on a limb here and say crypto is not that place.